been years since our living area had been painted and um you know we've been look wanting to paint it over again and um my wife actually bought some new furniture this summer that the um color of the furniture uh does not go with the paint that's in the room anymore you can see pretty much how it clashes there so we decided to um finally get around to repainting it and you know basically i started by trying to drag all the plants and anything by the wall out and you know get the taping stuff ready i used to use that plastic stuff with the masking tape on it like that but this time i decided to go with just a roll of masking tape and um home depot has some like uh brown paper for taping off stuff that should be more biodegradable and um you know a little more earth friendly so yeah, i pretty much started by moving stuff out of the way and then putting up uh, masking tape around all the edges and stuff because you know it usually turns out i am quite messy so this makes it a lot easier to you know just put some tape up and then don't stick the tape all the way down and you know then i just go back and i'm using some of this uh paper sheeting that comes on the roll there it's fairly thin but it really looks like it's going to work good and you know it's 100 percent biodegradable so you know that's a good thing so pretty much i started by uh going around the room and masking off anywhere where i could um you know make a mask get get paint on trim or this or that um it takes a while you know it takes a couple hours it took me a couple hours to do this one half of the room and i actually decided to break the room into two halves um just because it, i didn't move the furniture out and stuff so so it took took a you know half a day to get everything all masked up and get some cardboard and plastic and stuff on the floor and you know have everything protected and ready to go um at my dollar store i found some of these rollers that have a shield on them and uh, for a buck a piece i figured i'd try them and you know it turned out that they actually were pretty amazing um in the end so here i am all ready to to start my painting and um the first thing i do is just you know take a small brush and start going around the edges and you know start trying to cut in the, the top and the ceiling there and um, luckily the ceiling is still you know in pretty good shape so I didn't worry about that uh, when I bought the paint at Home Depot the guy at the counter said I'm gonna it's gonna take two coats but um, I decided to just buy one gallon just to see if I could get away with it and in the end it turned out that it really um, it covered good it's one of those paints with the primer in it and it actually only wound up taking um, one coat and it is a low VOC paint it's not the zero VOC but it's a very low VOC content paint that um, was really nice to use so cutting it in around the edge was a little bit of a pain because of the textured ceiling and then I got to try out start trying out that new roller and um, I just am so happy with this roller I usually get splatters on everything and with a standard roller, the uh, the handle is quite long, and it's a little bit harder to control and get everything, um, you know, the pressure on it right and everything. Where it turned out that having the, um, you know, just holding on to it right up there by the end, by the roller cover, really made it a lot easier to use and control and um, put a lot less force on your wrist. So, you know, in the end, it did turn out, you know, to be a really good buy and. Um, you can change your roller covers in it and reuse it so you know I can see using this several more times before I toss it so it um, you know I would recommend one of these things if you uh, are a painter like me that usually winds up getting splatters all over everything um, I did the whole job without one splatter hitting the ground so you know that's a that's a real good thing now the color that we chose is called uh, campfire blaze and we did use one of the Home Depot bear paints and this actually is the first time I've tried it and I really um, was happy with the results uh, it looks a little bit orange on in the pictures here but it does darken up as it uh, dries up so I got the first half of the room done and then I you know went back and I started taping off the second side and uh, about the biggest pain there was to get the TV down off the wall and um, you know after that it was pretty easy to you know just go through and um, coat the other half of the room uh it was a lot easier to break it up into like i said just because of you know all the furniture was in there and 
you know, they didn't want to really work around it. So the painting um, really goes quick. And uh, there you can see uh, that fan up in the corner there actually feeds into the back of my house um, with the wood stove when we, in the winter time, we turn that fan on and it um, keeps the whole back of the house warm because it's right next to the wood stove there. So, um, you know, I pretty much got the... Uh, whole room painted now and um, I'm leaving that area behind the wood stove uh, unpainted because that's where I'm going to be putting up the stone veneer. So there's the TV mount that I made years ago. Um, I think it would hold about a 600 pound TV. It's all machined and uh, solid inch and a quarter shafting and stuff like that but uh, it does hold the TV solidly once you get it mounted on there. So I got that all back up and um, you know basically working on getting that side of the room back together. In the meantime, across the street there, uh, out in the field picking the cabbage, they got them in real late this year and with all the rain and stuff. It looks like they're just picking little ones, but um, they're out there picking them now. So I got the, uh, the paint all done, and um, then I had to go to Home Depot. I ordered some of this, uh, this slate uh, veneer-like from Home Depot online and I had to go pick up a pallet of it and some other supplies to get going on the job. Um, it's pretty cool. This stuff is just made of slices of slate that are actually, if you look at the back of it, it looks like it's hot glued together. Somebody in China sat there in a the factory and glued all these small pieces together. And you can see uh, by rocking them there that they're not flat or anything on the back. So they, you know, they do need a good layer of uh, mortar behind them. Uh, and then I get out my stud finder, and that's one of those little electronic ones that I picked up at Costco a couple years ago, I think. It was it's like under 20 bucks, and it's really been a great stud finder. It's got little LEDs that light up on it as you slide it across the studs. And it's really, um, I found it to be extremely accurate when finding the edges of the studs, and, um, you know, it marks out the whole stud. So it's a good thing to have around if you're, you know, going to be, doing any work or hanging anything or you know just want to know where the studs are so I you know just kind of got them marked out and then I just took a level and went back with a sharpie and um, started putting lines on the wall so as they go along it'll be a little bit easier to make sure that the um, all the screws that I put in actually uh, hit into a stud and they hold the wonder board up good now I've seen uh, YouTube videos of people putting the same stone up just using like construction adhesive and um, I just wouldn't recommend it. It's just not flat enough. You need a good bed of mortar in it and you know it's by a wood stove and it's going to get warm so um, I decided to go with the Wonderboard way and you know put up a layer of the uh, I think it's about half inch thick uh, Wonderboard cement board which is actually just a lighter weight cement board and um, I also found some screws for uh, mounting the board that um, really nice. They supposedly they countersink their own uh, way into the board and stuff. So, you know, we'll see how they work in a second. And I picked up some adhesive just to help in the beginning to, you know, start getting it up. And this stuff's pretty amazing because you just take a uh, utility knife and it, it actually it, it cuts nice and clean and it cuts just like sheetrock. You, um... Just score it on the one side and then you just bend it and, you know, bend it down and actually uh, it breaks it breaks clean across the board. Then you just have to um, tip it up and cut the back side and, you know, separate. So it's, you know, basically about the same as putting up sheetrock and it's probably even about the same weight as sheetrock. So it's, you know, it's not too bad to put up. Yeah, and I was uh, real glad that I cut this easy and clean and, um, you know, it didn't make a mess because I was trying to do it all right there in the room. And, um, you know, I really didn't want to have to take this stuff outside and use a diamond blade or anything on it. So, you know, I got I got the first piece cut. Then I decided to start from the top down with that piece. So um, I took a piece of wood that was straight and just measured down from the um, the ceiling the the width of that wonder board plus I gave it an extra quarter inch um, and I just you know I just did this because I wanted to make sure it was tight up against the ceiling and I didn't want to mess up the uh, texture of the ceiling by hitting it 
by mistake or anything. So I figured by, you know, just getting a board there to hold it while I was putting it up, you know, it would help out some. And then I did buy some adhesive. Now this is uh, a real low odor adhesive that I bought. And basically it's not going to do anything. But um, I just figured that I would, uh, you know, put it to help with the um, installation of it. And also run seams around the edges like that. Just so that once it went up there would be no chance of uh, like a spider or anything else getting behind it and building a nest. So, and I just figured this was just a, a little bit extra safe guard to keep you know maybe dust and bugs out so I put the put the glue on that and um, just kind of put it up in place and was careful not to hit the ceiling and um, pretty much it was uh, I was lucky that you know everything was um, nice and level and square and stuff with the room so that made it real easy and then once I, I got it in place there, you can see I um, I said I had put that down a quarter of an inch. Well, you can see there I've got the quarter inch spacers so I can just um, kiss it up against the ceiling there and not have a gap or anything and, you know, not do any damage. So that, that went up really easy and um, and it was time to try putting in some of the um, the screws that I bought for it. And I was really amazed at how well they worked. Um, I put the screws, uh, I think, probably about between five and six inch centers. Um, I think they recommended six, but um, so they uh, they went in extremely easy. Um, they cut right through the point on them was designed to cut right through that board, no problem. And then they did a really good job of countersinking and pulling the head down below the surface. I was uh, really amazed at how clean a job they did. And once I got all the screws in, I was able to just uh, go back and I just took like a, um, a pretty sharp putty knife and just ran it over all the screw heads here just to get the little bit of fuzz that may have been on there. So, you know, now it's same thing over again to put the next sheet up. Um, and it was, uh, you know, easy to cut, just like you've seen before. And, um, you know, I put the glue on and then, you know, just put that board up again just to, to be safe so I wouldn't, you know, make a mess with the glue or anything. And I could get everything properly aligned and, you know, nice and butted tight together. Uh, some people do uh, actually put tape on them like sheetrock between the seams, but I didn't think it was necessary, you know, in this application, so... I just uh, basically butted them up pretty tight together and um, they're kind of a radius edge. I actually got filled in later when I put the stone up anyway. So I just, uh, you know, I figured this would just be a good precaution for, um, you know, to make sure that the stones were up good and they would stay up good. And in the end, it actually turned out that um, I think it added a little bit of extra mass between this wonder board and the the actual stone itself um, it picks up the heat from the wood stove and actually helps a room stay more evenly warm when you um, you know like overnight when you're burning it low so I think it was a good thing in the in the end and the other good thing about using the uh, wonder board and mortar uh, type installation is there's no uh, chemical outgassing later which um, my wife actually cannot tolerate so um, you know, this was kind of the best way for me to do it. Now, years ago when I put in the wood stove and put that base in, I actually um, took uh, some pieces of tiles and just ran them up the wall behind the wood stove there at the base. And uh, there you can see that these um, came time to have to remove them. And uh, they were just put in there with the uh, thin set mortar at the time. And boy, it turned out that stuff really sticks. Um, Actually, I wound up uh, pulling the uh, surface skin off some of the sheetrock. It was uh, sticking so good to it. So, um, you know, I never realized that thin, st thin set would stick that good. But um, so I had to go back and, you know, go across the base down there and break those tiles up and uh, get them moved, you know, taken out of the way and cleaned up just so that I could uh, put the next piece of cement board down there. That turned into the biggest mess of the whole job, I think. It um, took a couple minutes to do, but um, I just wound up with a piece of ceramic tile all over the place. 
Now, originally I was going to run the um, the stone, you know, from trim to trim there uh, against the windows. And then I decided that I really wanted to, um, to bring it up a little bit, the width of the base, and then narrow it down so I could keep the contrast of the um, paint color against the stone. So um, I did wind up, you know, here's where it's coming up, and there's some old trim that I decided to notch into. And got one of those little vibrating multi-tools but as you can see um, I pretty much destroyed all the blades that I had so um, I'm just kind of hacking this away for right now and have to get some better blades for later so I was able to you know notch out those corners of the trim where I wanted to um, bring the uh, stone up into and then uh, just cut and fit the uh, the last piece of that cement board that um, was the exact same width as the uh, stove base here you can see so there's kind of a step in there now I had ordered a stone from uh, Home Depot.com a little while ago and um, actually they uh, they put it on a big pallet and shipped it to the store and that was you know free shipping to the store and then I had to go to the store and pick it up um, so you know basically I went down to the store picked it up it was uh, 10 boxes and they do sell it in the store also but not the color that I used so um, you know pretty much there you can see everything's ready and I did bring those boxes inside for a couple days to let them all get up to room temperature and then the next thing I had to do is start sorting through them and trying to match colors and um, the fits of them good and um, just trying to you know lay out a couple rows of the tile so that um, when they went up they would look fairly even and my wife is over at the counter making me a pie to keep me all fueled up. Um, so anyhow, I uh, just decided to uh, break this video down into two because I didn't really want to um, make an hour long video. So this is the first part up to this point, you know, getting ready to put the stone up. And um, uh, I will be releasing the, uh, you know, the second part about installing the stone shortly. And the best part is it's all going to be done before the holidays. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.